Previously, I gave you some examples of the negative impacts of weeds, especially to human. And now, I will explain to you some of the uses of weed in ethnobotany perspective. Ethnobotany is the study of the relationship between plants and people. It includes study of the uses of plants by man and the relationship between man and vegetation. It examines our dependence on plants and our eff effects on them. If weeds are just plants out of space and properly regarded as useless by humans, is it possible they could, be, they could also be useful? Can a single species be a weed and a useful plant at the same time? These are the fundamental concepts that I wish you learn from this lecture. And I hope you guys can understand the many ways weed can be used and spark your ideas about the importance of doing research to find the uses of weeds. Please have some time to read this paper. This paper gives more insight of Malaysian perspective and what I teach is more technical and textbook. So most of the example I use are based on the research from developed countries, especially in the America or United States. Some plants are weeds and farmers actively work to control them in crops. Some weeds, perhaps the same ones, are also used as cattle fodder especially in areas where cultivated land is limited and holdings are small. Organic farmers do not regard weeds with the same antipathy that modern agriculture does. Weeds are also used as a construction materials such as cylindrical granaries. Some of the weeds can make, can make toys and also as a medicine. They also uh, weeds also stabilize soil, reduce evaporate water loss, provide shelter for insects and disease organisms, some useful and some harmful, and repair landscapes. Uh, so this is very a lot of beneficial weeds into human life. The world has more than 300,000 species of seed-bearing plants. Perhaps as many as 30,000 of these have been used to some extent by humans as a food source. Many of these have been lost or forgotten. However, fewer than 300 seed-bearing plants have become more or less domesticated and of these, about 30 provide the majority of human food. Nine of these belong to a single plant family, the grasses. For example, this young pigweed, or this pigweed, eh? Uh, may be eaten as salad greens and pigweed seeds, the seeds of this pigweed can be eaten raw or parched. Several species of amaranth, so this is amaranth, uh, grow rapidly and contain abundant high quality protein. Leaves of some species contain up to 33% and their seeds have around 16 to 19 percent protein. Young leaves uh, can be eaten as greens and dry roots can be eaten as a substitute for ginger or candied by boiling in a sugar syrup. Next is banyard grass. This is banyard, banyard grass. Banyard grass or in Malaysia it's called as rumput sambau very abundance in a rice cultivated area. This seed, the seeds of this banyard grass may be eaten dry or parched and have been ground into flour. Wild mustard, uh, this is wild mustard, is another weed that very abundance in certain area. This, the leaves of this wild mustard uh, have a hot spicy flavor that blends well in salads with lettuce and then dandelion. Wow, mm, yummy. Uh, and this wild onion, uh, this also next is wild onion, the ancestor of the domesticated onion, has been used as a relish to flavor cooked foods and to cover the taste of gamey meat. So they kind of like eaten by, uh, to, uh, with, uh, can be cooked with the meat. So 
next is this is kudzu so you you, you look how uh, invasive of the kudzu it is for for some japanese they eat kudzu root uh, it is ground to a fine powder and used as a condiment the leaves are also eaten kudzu was promoted extensively by us department of agriculture in the 1930s to the us to stabilize er eroding land the chinese have long relied on simple kudzu root extract to stop human craving for alcohol it is sold as an over-the-counter drug in china and is 80 percent effective when taken for two to four weeks the extract was evaluated in the united states and apparently did not gain approval for treatment of alcoholism which some which scientists like me do not welcome fields of kudzu you can see how the invasive they are okay but other priorities may prevail weed seed screenings uh, are used in many u.s states as animal feed a practice with some disadvantages a primary concern is that some seed will pass through the animals and the animals effectively distribute weeds to new place by their feces the forage and nutritional value of many weed species is equal to that of cultivated forage crops for example napier is a, a, a penicillin purpureum has been introduced into malaysian into Malaysia as nutritional forage for livestock industries. Many more plants, which some are considered weed, such as petai blalang, lucina, uh, lucina species, okay, uh, can be used as feed supplement for cows, goats, and even rabbits. Plants move in one place, but do not move in space while growing, as animals do because they are immobile and cannot escape from predators they have evolved elaborate chemical defenses plants are full of mostly unknown frequently unusual chemical compounds that may have medicinal properties more most perhaps as many as 99 percent of the flowering plants have never been tested a few are known to traditional tribal healers often called shamans or bomo scientists have been interested in the actual and potential use of plants in medicine for a long 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 time possible medicinal uses of 26 common weeds has been written since 1904 by henkel okay she noted that farmers in their fight to control weeds may be able to turn some of them to account then uh, please read dr uh, Dr. Baki's uh, paper, Dr. Baki's paper that I uh, mentioned before about utilizing weeds for medicinal uses in Malaysian perspective. He wrote a lot of medicinal use of weeds such as sendudo, the Malastoma malabatricum. Okay, this Malastoma malabatricum. Okay, or Blalai gajah, his clinentus. Clean, clean, uh, clean in tennis, okay, uh, sabah or sabah snake grass, or rumput, rumput kapal terbang here, which call is Cromolena odorata. All these and many more other species. All these species has various or diverse uh, medicinal uses or medis, medi, at least medicinal values. Weeds also have practical but often unappreciated value when used as ground cover for wildlife or for prevention of soil erosion on sites that cannot be cropped or otherwise managed by humans. Weeds can conserve nitrogen in some situations. Here we can see how cover crop, this all cover crop in oil palm plantation the cover crop such as mukuna bracteata is commonly used in all palm industry we use wheat we use wheat to control wheat okay we also can 
wheat also can be used as mulches. Okay, can be used as mulches uh, in organic farming. We will discuss about mulching later. Some weeds have aesthetic values that often used as ornamental for gardening and landscaping, reclamation or restoration. Some are widely acknowledged as weeds and others may become weedy because their ability to invade and dominate. All show the ability to escape their intended habitat. For example, this Salvina molesta, Salvinia molesta. This is an aquatic weed that has been used in aquarium, small ponds, and recreational lakes. However, it escaped and infested Mpangan Timataso in Perlis and become very problematic in 1990s. We already described how weeds serve as host for damaging insects and diseases. It is important to realize that not all insects or microorganisms damage other plants. If one plant harbors harmful organisms, it is only logical to assume that other plants may harbor beneficial organisms. The agricultural quest for high-yielding monocultures has reduced plant <coughs> diversity to the point where beneficial insects have been reduced in or eliminated from crop fields. One way to regain a desirable diversity in crop fields is to manipulate the abundance and composition of the wheat flora, wheat borders, occasionally weedy strips or wheat presence at certain times in the crop growth cycles are some of the possibilities. Weed scientists and farmers may even want to consider planting weeds that harbor known beneficial organisms. This could optimize plant protection and crop yield while minimizing other inputs. Pause this video and understand this table. Next, Ecornia. Ecornia crassipes. Okay. Commonly known as water hyacinth. Yeah. Is an aquatic plant native to the Amazon basin and is often considered a highly problematic invasive species outside its native range. Okay. Everybody knows about this. Everybody in the weed science community knows about this. However, Water hyacinths can be used for bioremediation. It can be used for bioremediation. Okay, uh, when there is, uh, especially when there is a heavy metal pollution in the water, it removes the heavy metals uh, selenium, manganese, and chromium from water and may be useful as a plant to detect this all these heavy metals. Now, can you find more of the uses of weeds? Please read Dr. Bucky's paper and, list, and let's discuss it in the class. Couple of things for you to think about. Let me know your opinion in the next class.